I am really really happy to teach you this very awesome Java technology. So far, we learned a lot of things. We learned about basic Java code structure. We learned about primitive variables, object-oriented Java, strings, flow controls, arrays, access controls, declaring rules, and many more. From this lesson onwards, we will talk about some little bit advanced topics. Don't worry. I will make it as simple as possible. I know my job. That is my responsibility. We had five object-oriented Java lessons. Object-oriented Java, construct an object, access modifiers, return types, and inheritance. I highly recommend you to watch them again. We are going to continue from them. In Java, we can pass information from one object to a method or constructor of another object. We are going to learn how to do it. Now, this is the first app class we have been using. I am removing these code lines first. You can select the code lines you want to delete and press the delete key of your keyboard. Well, if you click on this my project icon within the source folder within the default package, you will see the classes we have already created during this course. We created dog class. We created a soldier parent class and three subclasses of it. All right. Let us create another class called calculator. We are going to do some calculations here. You learned the steps of creating a class. Right click on this package icon. Select new. Then select class. I am typing the class name as calculator. All right. Now we have the calculator class. I am going to write a lot of methods in this class for different calculations. The first method is going to be the get square method. You can send a number to this method and you can receive the square of that number from the method as an output. Think about this. We should be able to send any number, including decimal numbers, to this method. Therefore, double data type is more suitable than the int data type. Type public, then double, double is the return type. Then, get square. Notice this. I have followed the Java name declaring standards here. Then, within parenthesis, type double input. This is a new thing to you. We call this parameter of the method. This double input is the variable of this method, which is going to hold the input data. You don't have to always name it as input. You can give any name you like. Now, include curly brackets. You all know, to get the square, we should multiply the input number by itself. Therefore, let us return the value by multiplying it in this way. All right, now, let us go back to first app class. I am going to declare a double variable called num1 and assign the value 12 to it. Then, create a calculator object called calc here. Using new keyword. Type calculator calc equal new calculator. Now, let us declare another double variable to hold the square number. Type double square number equals. Now we are going to call to the method of calculator class. Calc dot get square. Remember, within parenthesis, we should include the num1 as the argument here. What is the difference between argument and parameter in Java? A very popular interview question. A parameter is what appears in the definition of the method. When a method is called, the arguments are the data you pass into methods parameter. Let us type a system.out.println to show the result. Click here to see the output. All right, the result is 144. Arm that works perfectly. Let us change the value of num1 into 37.8 and check. All right, we got the correct answer. How this works? We take our input as num1, a double variable. Then we use it as the argument to call get square method of calculator class. Get square methods, double input parameter, takes the data, 
and they return the square value. Double square number variable takes that returned value. And we use it here to show the result. Very good. I hope you enjoyed this lesson very well. Watch this video again before go to next one. Next lesson is about methods with multiple parameters. We will be able to develop our calculator more.